You can have the best product or service in the world, but if nobody knows it exists, it doesn't do you much good. One woman who is taking the world by storm with her idea of bringing massive marketing strategies together through all the experts in the vegan industry is Sandra Nomoto. Sandra has written a book entitled Vegan Marketing Success Stories. And in this episode, you're going to meet Sandra. You're going to hear how she came up with the idea, what she did, and why this book is a must have for any vegan business owner or literally any business owner. So stick around. You're in for quite a treat. Welcome to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show, where your host, Kathleen Gage, shines the spotlight on vegan and plant-based businesses and entrepreneurs from all walks of life committed to cruelty-free eating, healthy lifestyles, animal compassion, and the environment. Enjoy the show. Well, you know, I love marketing. Anything marketing, I love to talk about. Anything vegan marketing, I even more love to talk about, Sandra. So it's great to have you here. And I love what you're doing with this book. Um, You have done what a lot of people have thought about, but they've never done it. So you took the initiative. And I want to start with um, when you became vegan. Let's start with that. And then let's move that into uh, why marketing. Sure. Um, First of all, thank you so much, Kathleen, for having me on this podcast. Uh, you had me on your other podcast, and so this is a real pleasure and honor, and I love speaking with you. You're you're such a great host. Um, so I've been vegan for, I guess, just a, um, just over four years. Uh, 2018, my birthday is kind of the the date that I <laughs> that I count from, but my journey started uh, much uh, uh, way before that, I should say. At the end of 2007, I saw the documentary Earthlings, and that just really kickstarted me to um, cut meat out of my diet. And that took a couple of years. And for a good stretch of time, I was still pescatarian, you know, eating some seafood on the weekends, um, a bit of dairy here and there during the week. Um, But vegan was always the goal. I knew that a vegan lifestyle matched my values. And that was ultimately where I wanted to be. Um, So I was able to cut out seafood finally in 2017. And then dairy was was really the remaining thing. Um, and it was really health that, that pushed me over the edge. I had a number of, uh, digestive issues for many years that went, um, undiagnosed, still undiagnosed technically (laughs) by my health team. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I took a food sensitivity test, uh, around the spring of 2018. And that was when I found out I was sensitive to dairy. So after I did a four month cleanse of dairy, I, I thought, Hey, I can do this now. And I guess, uh, I can, I can finally live the vegan lifestyle I always wanted to. So, <laughs> so that's how it happened. Awesome. Well, you know, I started my journey actually in 2018 and it started for health reasons. And I didn't want to call myself a vegan because all you vegans are crazy. And it's like, Oh no, no, I'm not a vegan. And then we're not the crazy ones. <laughs> I, I I know. I know. Well, now six we know. months into it, I actually was at the grocery store walking by the meat department and I, I literally felt this, this, this overwhelming sadness for all the death and uh, abuse that animals go through. And it was in that moment that I identified as a vegan and have never gone back. And, you know, when you said you did a six month or a four month cleanse of uh, dairy, what do you mean? Was that an official cleanse or was it just that you gave up dairy? Um, well, it was to identify what potential uh, foods might have been triggering um, some of my symptoms, and dairy just happened to be included in 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 that list. So I actually cleansed from a number of things: gluten, um, a whole different yeah bunch of vegetables. I found out uh, brewer's yeast, and uh, I think they call it baker's yeast. Um, so so alcohol, that was done. <laughs> yeah, so so. Um, yeah, so so I did a four month cleanse of pretty much all the foods on that list, and then started reintegrating a number of them back into my diet to test and see if if some of those were yeah were responsible for the symptoms. And so I I just didn't go back like I I didn't try out dairy because I right. knew that yeah I, I eventually wanted to be vegan and I knew that hey if I could do this for four months. I can, I can do this for good. So well, what so, I yeah. love is that you're a pretty outspoken vegan. I mean, you know, like myself, it's like, once I go into something, I go in and I gave up alcohol 38 years ago because I fell down a lot. It's like, I, yeah, I lost my memory and I would well. fall down. Yeah. It's like, it didn't work for me, but, um, 
I'm curious because you you are very um, outspoken as a vegan. You are known as a vegan. Uh, you're very visible on social media, which really ties into the project that you're working on now and how you're helping vegans to understand the importance of marketing. Um, and that's really what my mission is too, is the, the whole idea of, okay, you can have a great vegan product and service, whatever it may be. If people don't know you exist, it does you no good. It, it's like- you're, you're the best kept secret. So mm -hmm. what motivated you to actually move into the whole arena of vegan marketing and writing the book? And it, tell us the name of the book again. The name of the book is Vegan Marketing Success Stories. And so I started uh, a new business as the content doctor um, right at the start of 2020 uh, with the goal of doing content writing and editing for vegan businesses because I, I just really wanted to grow this industry as a vegan. Um, and prior to that, my uh, I ran a business, I ran a public relations agency. And so copywriting and, and public relations are very closely linked. Um, and I, yeah, I, I've, I've done really well in that business in, uh, or in this business, I should say, and, and we're having so much fun just supporting the vegan industry. And so the idea for this book, um, came out of a, an intuitive reading I had, uh, over my birthday in 2021. Uh, and the, the, the intuitive said, you know, your spirit guides are saying you're going to publish a book. <laughs> and, and I had no idea, you know, at the time I, I had not, I had no idea for a book. So, so I just kept thinking about it and kept thinking about what I would write. I knew it was going to be nonfiction. Fiction is just not my my area of expertise anyway. And um, I thought about how curious I was about just the vegan industry in general and how how you know how does Beyond Meat like just get as big as they are and how do how does this vegan business you know market themselves? How does that vegan business? And so I just I it was just out of curiosity and I found there were no books out there about marketing for this industry, except for Katrina Fox's Vegan Ventures. Yes. She, like her book was really the first about vegan business in general. It's still the only one out there that I know of, and except for the books that you've written too. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I obviously bought her book, checked it out, and she had a few chapters about marketing. So um, really my idea for the book was to take those, you know, few one or two chapters that she had started and flesh that out right. into a fully fledged book. And, and that was really the idea for it. And then I started, um, yeah, sending out emails to potential companies at the end of September. And then by the end of December, early January, 2022, the book, uh, was finished. <laughs> well, you know, and I love the model that you've used. And I want to remind people you're listening to the Vegan Visibility Show. I'm your host, Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with Sandra Nomoto. And uh, we are talking about vegan marketing. And your your story about uh, finding Katrina's book, that's actually how I found the whole vegan industry, uh, because I was looking for vegan marketing. And it, it's interesting, I've written 20 books, but I've never written one specific to the vegan market as far as a book itself. I've done a lot of programs and I have uh, the vegan uh, directory for podcast shows. Yes. I have how to get on podcast shows. It's called the podcast rockstar club. And it all pre vegan was uh, targeted towards just people in general with small businesses. And I really have to say that your model is one of the most brilliant that I've seen because you did what I always recommend to my clients is immerse yourself in the center of an industry by hosting something, whether it be an anthology book, whether it be a summit, um, and go to other experts, you as an expert, go to other experts, and that does what's called borrowed credibility. All of a sudden, we go from being a total unknown. I did that with my summit last year. Total unknown to all of a sudden, your name is everywhere, and people are going, I see you everywhere. And so I'm really excited uh, about what you're doing with this book. And who are some of the companies and the people that you invited to share their marketing story to be a part of your book project? Well, I should say I'm my goal. Um, and as you've already said, yeah, Katrina Fox was was really the the pioneer for this style. I had I had the idea in my head, but I didn't really put it to paper until I read Vegan Ventures and saw this book 
or the style of this book was already out there. And so she just gave me so much inspiration. Um, and so I just, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to run the gambit between solopreneur all the way up to, you know, million dollar corporation, but just, uh, yeah. And so I sent out a total of 280 requests out there. Uh, at first I was thinking if I send out about 200, I'll probably get 50 back, which is, which was my hope, but I had to send out a lot more <laughs> just because either, you know, for it, the emails didn't reach the people or they, they declined because they were too busy or just didn't want to be involved. And so, yeah, it, it almost reached 300, uh, the amount of companies I reached out to. Um, the final number of contributors in the book is 47. So I, so I almost reached that 50 number, um, your story included. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you. And, 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 uh, I, I also knew that um, because I'm not, I've never held a, an official marketing position myself. I've ran a PR agency that is just a subset of marketing. And so I'm not, I, I'm not an expert. I wanted to kind of teach the reader, whether they're vegan or not, um, all the potential tactics they could possibly do to form a strategy and real life examples of companies who are doing it. And so even after receiving those 47 stories, I found that there were still gaps in terms of like, you know, I, I, I'm not finding a lot of companies using traditional advertising or, mm -hmm. you know, events, festivals, things like that. So, so I really had to kind of still pull from the real world. Um, so in addition to the 47 stories, um, there are, there are about three dozen other companies that I've, um, yeah, just found information on the internet and gotten their permission, um, to include, uh, their story. So yeah, in total, it's about 80 companies that are, that are, mentioned. that's incredible. And you know what, how, how powerful that will be for the, the people who get the book. And I want to remind them, uh, it is vegan marketing success stories. That's the name of the book. And Sandra, where can people find the book? Well, if you wanted to want to get it first, um, if you're an ebook person, that's coming out soon, September 1st. Uh, the first place you can get it is lulu.com, their bookstore. Um, it will be available, you know, Amazon and all the other places where you can buy books. Um, and then if you're a print or audio person, November 1st, World Vegan Day, that's the magic day for you. Um, again, buy it. You can buy it on lulu.com's bookstore first, and then it'll be available in other places, uh, or I should say audible, uh, primarily for the audiobook. Wonderful, wonderful. And what will somebody get from from reading the book? Like what what tips and insights and strategies are they going to learn? And who is it best suited for? I'll answer the second question first, I would say it's best suited for uh, a startup founder, uh, or a marketer or founder of a small to medium sized business, because as much as I wanted to get the corporation stories out there, they just didn't, <laughs> they just didn't come back to me. Right. And so you're not going to get, you know, if you're working with a million dollar budget, you know, you might get a few examples in there, but it's not, it's not for you. It's really for that startup founder, um, maybe doing the marketing themselves, or, or like I said, uh, you've just started marketing, um, a marketing position at, let's say a vegan company. And you want to know, potentially what you can do. And um, yeah, and I, like I said, I try to include every marketing tactic possible in there. So you'll get, you know, the old school advertising billboards that you can do, um, which are very expensive, by the way, all the way up to, um, you know, digital marketing, that is by far the biggest chapter, because that's what most companies are using nowadays. And so right. um, yeah, everything from social media to email marketing to blogs. And so yeah, I've, I've tried to include uh I've tried to make it as current as possible, you know, five, well, it five and 10 like years from now, we might yeah. be using some different things, but in terms of what people are using in 2021 or this year, um, that's really the snapshot of what people would get. Well, let's, let's take a look at the mistakes that people make in business, because I I've been a marketer for gosh, 35 years now, and I've had my business 28 years and it's gone through many recreations as a result of the economy dipping as a result of nine 11, as a result of COVID. I mean, just massive change that you have to make in order to keep up with what's going on. And a lot of times people dig their heels in and they say, no, I, I, I'm not going to change. I don't want to change. I don't like change. Change is a part of doing business. So what would 100%. you say is the number one mistake from listening to the people who, who contributed to the book? Um, what did they say were mistakes people make and what would you say is the most important thing? So again, I'm giving you two questions here, but mistakes first, and then what do people need to do to really put their company on the map? 
You know, a lot of companies did not want to reveal their mistakes. <laughs> I should say that it's called marketing success stories for a reason. A lot, a lot of them, I would say, yeah, most of them wanted to just say, you know, this is what works for us. Um, there is a, I would say the one uh, company that did reveal um, a mistake that they made. Uh, they're called Vicado out of um, Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. and they sell um, vegan pet food. Um, I believe it's primarily for dogs. I can't remember if, yeah, if they, they cater to other pets, but um, they made the mistake of using a photo of sled dogs to um to talk about uh a study a study, I, a study that had a study that had come out that they wanted to reveal dogs are in great shape with with this kind of food and uh their followers uh did not take kindly to the photo of sled dogs for for obvious reasons right. um but even though that was not their intention to promote that industry and so they apologized profusely um they deleted the post which i actually don't necessarily recommend you do but it was just you know it was the route that they took and um yeah apologized for it um and and went on to to correct their uh <laughs> their uh I, I guess the the way that they were doing their content and so um that was that's a powerful story that's in the book uh that you'll learn about and i think that leads to the second part of your question in terms of what people need to know about marketing. And it's that you need to be prepared to constantly change because the strategy that may have worked for you in 2021 probably isn't the same now. And it's not going to be the same next year. You always have to evolve with your audience and your customer. Um, number one, because social media platforms change so much, you know, every time there's a change in the algorithm, you just have to pivot right. differently uh, in terms of, what you're posting um and and no strategy is the same that's what i found so interesting just uh the tactics that are working for another company or maybe even your competitor might not be the same ones as you're using right and so you just have to de develop your own trial and error keep up with the times um yeah keep in touch with with your audience because that's that's the way you'll evolve and figure out what works yeah and and i love what you say about being willing to change because the story that i contributed was a strategy that i you used to use a lot and I've made millions of dollars from doing this where I would do um, events that would lead up to a big event. It was a three-day event and at the three-day event I would introduce uh, consulting services. So my model for success for many, many years was doing in-person events and I'm just starting to get back into that because when the pandemic hit, that just was a crash and burn. I couldn't use it anymore. So I, I took what I was doing offline and put it online, although I've been involved in digital marketing for many years. But if I would have held on to that and said, oh, no, no, this is what I do. I, I only do in-person events. I would have been the only person at the event because events were shut down. And yeah. so I really love what you said about people have to adjust and change because um, the, the mistake I've seen people make uh, over and over again is, well, this is the strategy I used before, so I'm going to uh -huh. use it again. It's like in a relationship. You know, I've been in a 33-year relationship. What I did in the first year is very different than what I do in year 33. There are different... Yeah. Um, times, uh, seasons that we go through in a business, in a relationship. And I really believe business is all about relationship and you've built those 100%. relationships so beautifully. Um, now I just wanted to mention, uh, yeah, you brought up the, the point about how you had to pivot during the pandemic mm -hmm. as did many of us. We all did. Um, I have a section uh, in one of the chapters about how exactly these companies pivoted and some of them were even born out of the pandemic. And so, so if, if you're thinking, yeah, I want to know, you know, how do we, how do we um, survive times of crisis? That section is in the book. For Wonderful. You. <laughs> Well, you know, and one of the mistakes I would say that I've made in my business or I, I made early on is that I did not invest in mentors. And when I started investing, and I'm talking very substantial investments, um, I, I remember the first big mentor I got, I paid $15,700 for four hours of her time. And I, I was like, have I gone crazy? I mean, because... I was watching colleagues get incredible success from this woman. And I'm like, okay, am I going to do this or not? And I decided to make the investment, which meant I had to fly to where she was at. I had to stay up in a hotel. I had to pay for my own meals in addition to the 15,007. And I'll never forget wow. that number because it was like, 
That's crazy. And yet, once I made the investment, something shifted in me. And it reminds me of early on when I was first starting my business, I invested $600 in a Tony Robbins uh, product. And my hands were sweating. I was so petrified of making that kind of investment uh, nearly 30 years ago. And yet, once we make those investments, we either are going to waste our money because we don't do what the mentor says, or we're going to go deep into it and do exactly what they say and get the result that they recommend. And what was interesting is this mentor, she made one recommendation and I was doing my own live events at the time and I didn't, nobody was coaching me on it. I was just figuring it out as I went along and she made one recommendation. That one recommendation made me $50,000 and it was like, boom. And, and so I think the mistake I see people make and what I love about your book is that you've got 47 vegan mentors in there. And then about another 30 or 40 that are business mentors that people can read the book and they can get the strategy and it's up to you whether you apply it. So I, I love what you're doing with the book. And um, I should point out, they're not all necessarily vegan. The the business right, right, are vegan. Right. Yeah but not necessarily. Yeah. And itself. we'll, we'll forgive you for that. That's okay. No, <laughs> because actually, you know, and I actually, I'm glad you brought up that point because a lot of times I think we get really jaded and we, we get really isolated or we, we live in our silos thinking, Oh, I can only learn from, uh, you know, if I'm a Christian, I can only learn from Christians or if I'm a Republican and I can only learn from Republican. No, we learn from each other. And yes. I, I love the fact that you have a diverse group of people who are giving insights because it really is, is about what are you willing to do to grow your business? And and Sandra, as you think about your own business, where do you see yourself in four to five years with what you're doing with this particular book? And maybe the, the second book will be the corporations that they say, oh, okay. Now, because part of uh, what I know to be true is oftentimes when we first get an idea and maybe like when I did my first summit, you know, I wasn't known in the vegan world. I did have a track record of marketing success. So I applied a lot of what I already knew to finding the experts to do the summit. But I know that there were some people that maybe I approached them and they're like, who are you? Well, now they're like, oh, it's Kathleen Gage. And same with you. It's like maybe initially the corporations weren't willing to do it, but now they will be because of the fact that you have the success under your belt. So where do you see yourself in four to five years? Um, well, I, I guess I'm going to tie it back to the reason why I did this book. Um, it is, of course, for readers to learn <laughs> how to do marketing for their own businesses. But, um, you know, what I've learned from you and from successful authors like Matali, the vegan publisher, is that books can really help you market your business. And so uh, as the content doctor, as a writer and editor, I wanted to show people I can write, you know, and here's the book to prove it. Um, and I also have uh, another audience uh, who are self-publishing authors. So I would love in five years to be known as somebody who can help edit, ghostwrite, or format, um, help help them format their books so that they can get their own books out there. And obviously, you know, if you're vegan, if you're vegan and you're an aspiring author, you're exactly who my audience is. And um, so I, I had to hire an editor because I, I didn't want to do my own editing. Right, right. <laughs> I wrote the book, um, but I did my own formatting. And so um, the interior of the book, um, I formatted the inter uh, the um, the ebook. I formatted myself as well. And so yeah, if you're if you're an author and you want to see you know some of the work I've done, you can of course look at the authors that I've worked with. But my book is an example of <laughs> exactly uh, what I can do. And so so yeah, I just want to get closer to to the that niche, uh, whether it's self publishing authors or uh, vegan businesses. Um, and I. I, I've already felt it in terms of, you know, my own, I guess, profile and reputation with this book and this, the support that I've gotten. Um, yeah, I, I'm very confident that I will get there. Wonderful. And I want to remind people to get the book, Vegan Marketing Success Stories. Just go to Lulu, go to Amazon, go to any of your favorite online bookstores and you'll find the book. And it's a vegan marketing success story. So go ahead and pick up a copy and pay attention to what people are saying, because there's going to be a wealth of wisdom inside that book. And what can you recommend, Sandra, to the people who are just starting a business and they really want to know what's what should I do first? Like, what's the first marketing strategy I should use? Oh, gosh. Um, 
I would say probably get a website together. <laughs> um, I see. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny. I see people just starting Instagram accounts and, and, you know, that might take you so, so far, but if meta, if Instagram goes down, if Facebook goes down, you know, where's your business? So it is still important in this day and age to have your own website. That's like, that's like your home, you know, your home base, your web website. And then I would say the first things are late to layer on our social media. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say which, which platforms, because that's going to be different depending on your business. Um, newsletter, start a newsletter, because again, like I said, you never know when a social, social platform may go down. Um, you got to build an email list and then blogs. Um, so blogs are like mini stories that, that live on your website that will help you with search engine optimization and help you get found on Google. I would say those are probably your base tactics. And right. then when you want to, yeah, when you, when you, when you're ready to layer on more, look at my book and you'll get everything else. Absolutely. And, you know, start with what's manageable and what's doable and don't try to do it all in one fell swoop because that's the mistake yes. that I see people make. And speaking of finding uh, someone, how do people find you? Uh, the easiest places is my name, my website, uh, sandranamoto.com. Uh, if you want to zero in specifically on services for being in businesses, um, you can find that, that at thecontentdoctor.co, but it all goes to the same place. And I'm uh, everyone on social media with my name as well, Sandra. Wonderful. Nogo. And you're doing a great job on social media. And um, in you. closing, Sandra, what are your final thoughts for people as they're either thinking of growing a business or they have a business and they really need to put more marketing strategies in place? What What are your final thoughts for people? Yeah, I would say the book is is probably the best the best place to learn what other companies are already doing. That's that has brought them success. Um, for whatever reason, if you don't want to pick up my book, um, please find help. As, as you've talked about, you know, mentors are so important. Um, other businesses are, are very important, especially the vegan industry. We are still small. We have to remember that. And so, you know, supporting each other in business is, is very important. Find networks. Uh, I've done a blog on all of the networks that you can find other vegan business, um, business owners. Um, so you'll find that on my site as well. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, whether it's a mentor or just other businesses that you want to bounce ideas off of, um, it's really important to get that support, uh, because we can't do it alone. Right, saying. right. And what I'll make sure to do is in the show notes, I'll put all the, the ways that people can get in touch with you and, um, you know, definitely find that support. And, uh, you you had mentioned your your intuition early on in our conversation. You mentioned something about intuition, and I really believe that if we trust our own intuition, um, it, it, sometimes people give us recommendations that may not be a fit for us. Early on, when I wanted to change my business name from Power Up to Pro for Profits to Vegan Visibility, I actually had several really high powered consultants who are colleagues and friends of mine who said, "No, no, it's a huge mistake. You you're going to narrow down too much." best choice I made was to change the name because, and my gut was telling me you need to do this. A lot was changing in the industry. And so sometimes we can get insights and recommendations from people. And we have to step back and say, does that fit for me now? Because what might be recommended today may not be a fit for today, but six months from now, it may be perfect. So Listen to the experts, get a mentor, join mastermind groups, uh, look for networks online, buy the books. Definitely you want to get this particular book. I, I can't uh, emphasize that enough. And most of all, follow your intuition. And if you get rid of meat and dairy, your intuition gets pretty strong because you don't have all that 100%, crazy energy. I would agree. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so thank you, Sandra. This has been delightful. And I look forward to watching you grow and grow and grow in the industry. And I'm glad that I can say I knew her when because I see some <laughs> really big things coming for you. That's what my intuition says. Have a great Thanks day. Thanks so much, Kathleen. You've been listening to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when the next episode is live. And we always appreciate reviews. Join us next time for more inspiration, education, and motivation to build your business one cruelty-free and healthy person at a time.